Welcome to VI Shots. My name is Michael Ivaliotis. In this episode, we will demonstrate the capability of LabVIEW 2010 to separate compiled code from VIs. Now, by default, LabVIEW stores compiled code together with the VI file. This is something transparent to us and we never pay much attention to it. However, this can cause headaches when our code is under source code control. Sometimes when we edit a VI and we know we've only edited that single VI, we suddenly see that other VIs require saving even though we haven't changed them directly. This problem becomes more prominent when we are using typedef controls that are called by multiple VIs throughout your application. So now that small change you wanted to make to that one VI requires you to save and commit to source code control dozens if not hundreds of VIs. Let's see an example of this. Now, to demonstrate this, I have a top-level VI, which calls a sub-VI. And what we're going to see now is by making a change to the sub-VI, you'll see that the top-level VI becomes um, affected. So I'm going to put a Boolean control on here, and I'm going to wire it to the terminal. Now, this will cause the top-level VI to be recompiled, which causes the file to require resaving, as shown here by the asterisk. You can configure your VI so that LabVIEW separates the compiled code from the VI file. In this configuration, when VIs are first loaded, LabVIEW creates and stores a VI object file. These VI object files are stored in the LabVIEW VI object cache folder, which is in underneath LabVIEW data. Now, whenever a VI requires a recompile and is not a direct change, then the VI object file gets updated, not the VI itself. So now changes to the sub-VI don't affect the callers anymore. Let's see an example of this in LabVIEW. Now let's go back to our example, and we're going to configure the VI properties of the top-level VI. Here in the general settings, we see a checkbox for separate compiled, separate compiled code from source file. We'll enable that and hit OK. And in order to keep this setting, we'll save the VI. And then we're going to go back to our sub VI and do the same change we did earlier. We're going to add a Boolean control. I can find it. There it goes. We're going to add a Boolean control, wire it to the terminal. And now we see that we don't have a so-called dirty dot. And uh, LabVIEW is telling us that this VI does not need to be changed. Let's do another example. In this case, we're going to change a type definition uh, which is used by both the sub VI and the top level. So we'll go ahead and edit this type definition. Uh, we'll make an e a simple change. We'll duplicate the Boolean. And then we will apply the changes. So now that we've applied the changes, we'll see that in the top level we don't have an asterisk, but in the sub VI we do because it doesn't have the separate compiled code checkbox enabled. The previous demonstration showed how to enable this feature on a single VI. If we wanted this feature to be to work on multiple VIs, for example, in a project, we could go into the project properties, and in there we'll find a checkbox to separate compiled code from source file. Now this only applies to new VIs created within the project. They will get this setting when new VIs are created. If you want to configure uh, VIs with already in your project, you can click on the Mark Project VIs button, and it'll bring up a dialog where it lists all the VIs in memory uh, or on disk that are not in memory. And here we can see the status is unmarked. And like I said, it shows VIs that are on disk, uh, but they are in the project. So these are only VIs that are in the project. If your VIs are not listed in the project, this dialog won't help you. So if you want to enable this feature, you look at all uh, the highlighted VIs and you click Mark VIs. Click OK to confirm. And now all your VIs will have this setting. Now before I went into this dialog, I went into the top level and disabled this feature. Um, so let's go back in to confirm, yes, uh, that checkbox is now set. Now if the VIs are not in memory when you uh, mark the VIs, they will be changed on disk. But if they are in memory, once you close them, LabVIEW will ask you to save them. 
So let's say you want to toggle the separate compiled code setting on a collection of VIs that are not in a project. So let's say they're in a folder hierarchy. Well, LabVIEW exposes a VI server property called contains compiled code. And if set to false is the equivalent of toggling the separate compiled code setting on a VI. And here I've coupled together a quick program that actually does this. So here is the VI property and it's set to false. And in this code, I list recursively the directory with all my code and pulling out only the VIs. I open a reference to the VI, set the setting, save the VI, and then close the reference. Obviously, you can go more advanced. You can actually do uh, checking to see if it's an act, if the v if the setting is changed, and only then save it if you want. The last thing I want to show you is how to clear your VI object file cache. There are two reasons why you might want to do this. One is you might want to free up your hard drive space. And the other is you might want to force LabVIEW to recompile your VIs. LabVIEW provides a dialog for this. Under the Tools menu, if you go to Advanced, Clear Compiled Object Cache, you'll get a dialog that lists your cache files and how much hard drive space they occupy. All you got to do is just hit the Delete button to clear the cache. One final word of caution. If you're running VIs inside the LabVIEW Runtime Engine, you cannot separate the compiled code from the VIs. The LabVIEW Runtime Engine doesn't have access to the VI object cache and can't create the VI object files. So just be aware of this one limitation. That's it for now. See you next time on VI Shots.